Hello, this is Toll from Trifo Productions with another Blender Quickie for beginners. And uh, I know some people may think, well, hey, you keep saying it's a Quickie tutorial, but uh, the last one was almost 30 minutes long. And the reason why I use the term Quickie for these tutorials is because when you first, that just goes with anything, when you first start learning anything, it's going to take you some time to actually understand the in, ins and outs of whatever you're using and it's the same thing with software with blender so yeah this is going to be a tutorial for people who are just starting to learn blender or any kind of CG animation software specifically blender and we're going to use modifiers to help us understand blender and how to use it and as time goes on as you continue to practice these techniques and these use these keyboard shortcuts you actually will be able to do all this stuff pretty quick pretty fast, make a chair pretty fast, a t-shirt pretty fast, things like that, clothing, tablecloths, anything you need to make pretty fast. And it helps when you're doing freelance because there's nobody, no company out there that's gonna wait for you to create a model of a person or clothing. They're not gonna wait like three months for you to finish that stuff. They're gonna want it yesterday pretty much. So these tutorials are here to help you as a beginner get a hold of these tools in Blender and actually use them to improve your skills in Blender and to speed up production. So now this model I've made in Make Human. I'll leave a link of this. I'll try and put it in an online folder and make it available to for you guys to use so you can follow along with this tutorial. And I'll leave a link of that in the description below this video. So the first thing you want to do is press Shift A, it's going to bring up a cube, Shift A. From the pop-up menu, choose cube. It's going to put it right where our cursor is. And what we're going to do, remember to zoom in, you scroll up with your mouse wheel to zoom out, to scroll down. We're going to press S to scale it up. So we want it, what we want is that we want the cube to basically fit around the whole body of our, of our model. So press S to scale up and drag up with your mouse. I'm going to stop right there. And what we're going to do to make our job a, lot, a little bit faster, a little bit easier, is we're going to split this in half. And we're going to use the mirror modifier to duplicate either side of our mesh. That way, when, when we're modeling on one side of the mesh, it automatically translates to the other side. So we're going to have to do both sides separately. So we're going to press Tab. And then we're going to press Control R to bring up our loop cut and drag our mouse up to reveal where the cut's going to be. And we're going to left click on our mouse once, left click, click again to confirm our selection. And then we're going to go from edge selection to vertices selection. We're going to press that. And the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to see through our cube. <clears throat> that way, when we select anything in front of our cube, it will go, go all the way to the back of it, so press A to deselect, we don't want to select the middle part of the cube, just the end point, so press A to clear your selection. Go down here and we're going to activate the, I'm going to call it the transparency aspect of Blender, click on that. And when you've done that, you can see, you can now see through the cube. So we're going to press 1 to center our model and our uh, cube. Press C for circle, select, left click once, hover over your next uh, area, left click once, and then right click to close out the C selection. Press X, and from your pop-up menu, you're going to click delete vertices, and delete that side. And then what we're going to do next, we're going to go over to this side of the Blender user interface, click on this wrench icon and from modifiers click on that and from here we're going to choose mirror so click mirror and it automatically mirrors the right side of our cube onto the left side we're going to press clipping that way the middle part merges and we're going to tap out of the uh, edit mode and tap back in to just confirm the clipping part of it and now we can start, you know, modeling the t-shirt. The, uh, 
Now, the kind of shirt we're going to, t-shirt we're going to make is not going to be one with sleeves. It's going to be, I think they call it a wife beater. I don't know why they call it that, but that's what they call it. And that's the t-shirt that doesn't have any sleeves on it. So we're going to press 7 on our keyboard to go into the top view. If you want to see what's going on at the top, tap out of edit mode. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pull the mesh towards the back of our model. Because we want the mesh to be somewhat centered onto our model so it fits perfectly when it comes to this t-shirt. So left click and hold down your left mouse button. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's drag all the way back. And we're going to stop right there until this, this orange dot is right in the middle of his head. Now this is, I'm using Blender 2.79, but this is the same kind of concept or techniques or principles. You can use any version of Blender 2.4, 2.5, or 2.8, 2.82, I think that's what's out now. But yeah, it's the same technique, same concept, using modifiers and meshes, that's all this is. So press 1 again to go into the front view. Scroll up to zoom in and then go into edit mode one more time. Tap on that. Now we want to make the the shoulders here a hole for our shoulders. And what we're going to do now is we're going to press Control R. And we're going to scroll up once with our mouse to actually let's okay let's not scroll up yet. We're going to click on that to confirm we want the loop cut in that area. Scroll up once to increase. I think my mouse is acting up again. Let me press Control Z. Sometimes with the software that I use, the mouse also doesn't really translate properly to the software. Sometimes it doesn't react when I click on the buttons. But let's do that again. Press Control R and scroll up. Okay, that now it's working. You scroll up on your mouse wheel once to get two loop cuts. Uh, left click and left click again and that's going to create two loop cuts here because so we're going we're going to need those and what we're going to do again is put another loop cut just above this one so press control r again and then scroll your mouse wheel over that way you get a horizontal loop cut, loop cut and not a vertical one and once you've got the loop cut in the horizontal position left click, click again and then drag it down if you want it to be just underneath his armpit, so left click there to confirm that selection. And now what we're going to do is going to go to the top part of our model because we want to make a hole for his neck also and a, a uh, horizontal hole for his arm, for the sleeve of his arm. So press 7. And then we're going to press Control R again for our loop cut. Scroll up once. You have two lines. And make sure that they are in the right position. You, don't, you want them facing or you want them horizontal to your model. Left click once and then drag up. So you want this, these lines to be somewhat putting the arm somewhat in, in the middle of these lines. And once you have that, just eyeball it to make sure it's in the middle for your sleeve to be. And then left click again. And then there you have you know, the uh, hole for your arm. Now you've got the, I think for the neck, let me see, okay, the neck, well that's good for the neck also, yeah, it fits the neck pretty much. So now we're going to go into face select, and once we do that we're going to cut out this hole, but before we do that let's make sure we have enough, a hole for the, the neck. Let's go back up to 7, the top view, press Control R one more time. Make sure that this time it's in a vertical position, your loop cut. Click once and then drag it over to make sure that the line is pretty close to the, the neck. You want, uh, you want to have a pretty good sized uh, space to, for the neck to go. And then click once. And then you've, you've, you know, you've confirmed that uh, loop cut selection. And from here, let's go into face select. So go down to this, the bottom part of your user interface, click once. In this uh, area here, this flat orange square icon that brings up the uh, face selection. Click once up at the neck part. Press X. And this time, instead of deleting the vertices, we're going to delete the faces. So from your pop up menu, scroll, scroll down to the faces aspect or face, faces section and click once on that. And, and that gives us our loop cut there for his neck. We're going to do the same thing for 
uh, the arm here, click once, and we have that selection. Press X again on your keyboard from the pop-up menu faces also. So now we have that. And now it's it looks boxy. Let's start, before we continue, let's do the same thing for the bottom. We want to delete everything, all the faces at the bottom. And in order for you to not accidentally select something above the faces, above these faces at the bottom, click on this icon again to turn off the transparency aspect of Blender. And what we're going to do is, is left click. Let's use mouse, let's use uh, circle select. So press D and then click with the left mouse button on all these vertices, on all these faces. Right click to confirm your selection, press X and delete the faces again. And that gets that's gotten all the faces at the bottom. So we've gotten rid of all that. And now what we're going to do now is we're going to let me see if we're going to try and give this a better, more of a t-shirt shape, because right now it just looks like a box. And the reason why I wanted to try to give it more of a t-shirt shape to pretty much shape around the body before we add the uh, cloth modifier or the cloth simulation is that we want to make sure that once we add the cloth simulation, we don't have any, you know, unnecessary, unrealistic looking uh, wrinkles. Because if we added or if we applied the cloth simulation at this point, what's going to happen is that you'll have weird wrinkling in this part because this is just a straight edge and this part also. So we'll, let's let's uh, let's give this more of a shape for his body. And what we're going to do is go to edge select, and we're going to hold down Alt. So we want what we want to do is select this set of edges and drag this all the way down do the same thing for the back so we want to excuse me hold down alt on our keyboard and then left click and that chooses all those vertices and we want to also have some some proportional editing done so when we drag down this part of the edges the rest pretty much flow with the top that way we get more of a, a smoother transition from the top to the bottom. So we're going to click on that to activate that and press connect it. And then left click on that Z directional arrow. Hold down your left mouse button and drag down. And you can see that this circle comes up. And to increase the influence of that particular of this circle around your selection, you scroll up your mouse wheel. And as you can see, the bottom part of the mesh goes down with the top part which is great okay now we're going to do the same thing to the back we might have to pull this down a little bit more also uh, that's to give us better results but let's go to the back hold on alt left click and we're going to left click on the blue directional arrow pull this down again we can scroll up a little bit more we're going to, we're going to th we're going to fix this part here because we don't we want there to be this part to be up and have a better flow from front to back but let's focus on this back part here left mouse button again over the Z directional arrow and hold down your left mouse button pull down and scroll up let's scroll down to increase your influence there okay let's get out of that let's deactivate the proportional um, editing aspect and now we're going to work on this part we're going to bring this up because we want that t-shirt the top of it to go over his shoulder so once again this is going to be a loop cut so press ctrl r and hover you can see that's been it's been uh, it knows where to place loop cut because it's you can see the purple arrow left click and then left click again to confirm that selection and then left click hold down your left mouse button pull up over the shoulder let's turn on the proportion editing let's press ctrl z if we, we want to pull this up and pull down, pull up this part also. So we want to activate the portrait editing once again. Left click on that. And then hold down your left mouse button and drag on up there. And we're going to scroll up to reduce our selection, our influence there. And that's good. With this, this part of it, okay, the mouse is not, okay, there it is. We don't, we're not really concerned about how high the strap is for the t-shirt because when we when we apply the um, cloth modifier 
what it's going to do is uh, we're going to have the, the model as a collision as a collision object and have the cloth of the t-shirt fall onto the subject and that the subject's going to hold up the t-shirt like in real life you hold up that your your, your your clothing doesn't fall off of you when you ha when you put it on it just stays on so that's what's going to happen when we, when we uh, add the cloth modifier okay, let's look around and what we're going to do now is we're going to fix this a little bit we're going to pull this up but we just want to pull up this small section so let's go back to the uh, vert select click on that and then left click and the direction arrow comes up hold down your left mouse button over your uh, Z directional button or arrow and pull up scroll up to reduce your selection and we're going to just pull that up a little bit to kind of give it more of a uh, like a U-shape, like a like a T-shirt U-shape. Okay, now we're going to go back to Edge Select, and we're going to turn off our proportional editing. We're going to choose this. We're going to press Alt, hold down Alt. We can choose all of the vertices at the same time. So hold on Alt, and then left click. And let's do that again because we chose the wrong one. Let's let's click in this area with the, where there's a lot more space to work with. Left click, hold on Alt, left click, and it's chosen all that. And then over your Z directional arrow, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to hold down the left mouse button. We're just going to pull down. We're going to reduce our influence there. I thought I turned that off. Disable that. Pull that down. And that's, that's good. And now what we're going to want to do is add another, another loop cut to this again. So we want there to be somewhat. We want we want to create a hole here to make it look like a hole as close as uh, as a hole to, as possible. So we're going to put a little loop cut here. So press Control R, and it's already put our loop cut in the right position. And then left click again, left click to confirm. And we're going to go back to Vert Select or yeah, Vert Select. Click on that. We're going to choose this vertices. So we want to pull this up. So left click on that, hold down on your left mouse button over the Z arrow, and then pull this up. Okay, that looks good. And we're going to, let's kind of straighten this out a little bit, this particular uh, set of vertices. And there's a trick that I usually do to straighten all this out so that it looks straight from the beginning. So we're going to press Alt. Uh, hold down Alt, left click to choose all these vertices, and it's sometimes it's kind of tricky to get it right in terms of the direction, but we're going to just see if we can get this with one shot. And what we're going to do is uh, press S for scale, and I think it's on the Z axis where we want it to get straight, then Z and zero, and there it is. It straightens out the whole thing. I use that trick all the time to straighten out vertices. I have a tutorial on that also. Let's do the same thing with this set of vertices. We want these vertices to be somewhat straight. So Alt and left click. S for scale. Z direction zero. That's also straight. Okay, so we have that. And now what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to pull this in a little bit and also pull this in also and then once we've done that, what we're going to also do is, is increase the number of uh, vertices in this mesh. We want to have a smooth looking fabric. We want it to look like fabric because if we try to add the cloth simulation to this right now, it's going to just look pretty bad. So we want, we want to avoid that. And as I said, we're going to move this in to get close to the body of our, of our subject. And the same thing with this, the front and the back. So let's go back to face select, click on that. Press C for circle select, and then left click, left click, right click. And we're going to hover over the Y direction this time. And we're going to hold down left mouse button, and we're going to just pull it in. And get as close to the body as we can. Okay, it's, it's pretty close. Right, that's, that's pretty good. It's not, okay, there we go. Once we see the, the mesh starting to peek through, the body of our model starting to peek through, we, want, we don't want it that close. Let's pull it out a little bit more. And now, sorry about that, let's go to the back also. Press A to deselect from the front. Press C again for circle, select, left click, left click, 
right click and what we're going to do we're going to do the same thing that we did with the front hold down our uh, y directional arrow left click hold down your left mouse button and then drag that in also once again if you see the mesh come through we want to pull it out so we don't see the mesh coming through all the way and this is is pretty good here it's pretty good now let's pull this down a little bit just pull this down a little bit more so we're wanting to get this like I said before get this looking as close to t-shirt as possible uh, in this rough phase to avoid any kind of strange looking wrinkling going on with our t-shirts and we're going to choose edge select here you just want to choose this edge left click on that and the next thing you're going to want to do hover your uh, cursor over the Z directional arrow hold down your left mouse button to choose the Z direction and just pull down and there we go okay we have something we have something looking good here it looks like a like a uh, <laughs> bulletproof vest right now but that's going to change in just a little bit now what we did to the front and the back by pulling it in uh, want to do the same thing with the sides pull the sides in also so we're going to uh, turn on the our facelift C for uh, circle selection left click left click left click left click left click and choose that one also left click and then right click now with this this is going to just bring in these faces, but it won't bring in the top ones. So let's go to vert vertices selection. Click on that. And then hold down shift on your keyboard and left click the top. And that will automatically add that selection to the rest of it. And we're going to pull all this in as close as possible to uh, our model. Without, and when we see it penetrating through the mesh, we have to pull it out just a little bit. If you want the mesh as close to the model as possible, so we're going to do that right now. Just pull it in, hold down left mouse button, and pull on the X directional arrow, and it's starting to. Okay, that's that's good enough right there. And you can see that it's it's is a pretty good distance from the model. Okay, let's look at the bottom, and to to pivot around like this, at on your uh, model on in your user interface of Blender, you hold down your your middle mouse scroll wheel hold that down and you just move your, your mouse around and it will pivot around your model like that which is helpful now let's press one so we can see it's uh, head on here and what I've noticed also is that we would want to pull this out just a little bit because we want to have that that kind of that like U shape in the neck area here so we're going to let me see, let me back at the top, okay, I still find this press one, go back into the front view. So left click there, hold over, uh, hover over your X directional arrow, hold down your left mouse button, just drag that across, okay. Let me see, we might, we can also do the same thing with the outside vertice also. So A is to deselect, and then left click again on that outside vertice, X arrow again hold down your left mouse button pull that in just a little bit okay there we go okay so this is what we've got the rough aspect of our model here of our uh, mesh here this is our t-shirt and the good thing you want to do too is get into the habit of naming your your meshes you, you don't want to get into a situation where you've just got all these meshes and cubes and all these models of this and that in your scene and they're all named cube one, cube two, cube three. You don't want that. So in order to name your uh, your mesh, press N to pull out the uh, side panel, and then scroll down to item, and click in there once, and just let's call this T-shirt T-shirt. Enter, and that shows up at the bottom there. So now you know what you know what this is for future references. Let's press N to give us more real estate to work with. Let's press N one more time, or sorry, T, to get rid of that uh, tool panel so we can have more real estate. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to add a subsurface uh, modifier to our t-shirt here. And what the subsurface is going to do 
is that it's going to add more vertices to our measure. But let me let me do one more uh, proof check. This is one of the things where you, you know you, as I say, when it comes to carpentry or to any kind of physical work, it's better to measure twice and cut once as opposed to measuring once and cutting twice, which means just proof your work before you go to the next step. That way you're not you know you don't end up fumbling over stuff and trying to you know correct issues that should have been corrected before. So let's press tab here. And I want to make sure that this face is not going to be an issue and this won't be an issue either. And I'm looking at it and uh, and I'll, I don't it may not be an issue. Because the concern that I've got right now is these are continuous vertical vert, vert, vertical lines or vertices lengths I guess you could I could say this has length from back to front same with this same with this but if you notice this doesn't this stops right here so I don't I'm trying to make sure this is not going to be an issue when it comes to um, adding the uh, subsurfaces modifier to it and also the claw simulation let me see I don't think it will be because it what could happen is that you can have like a really weird wrinkle here because it doesn't go all the way to the back and the same thing with that let me see let me see what to do what to do um, how about just probably just being on the safe side how about yes yeah, let's, let's just be on the safe side here and let's let's merge let's merge this to this and to do that you just left click left, left click and press alt M and you want to merge it at the first you want it to go up left click left click alt M at first oh excuse me alt M oh wait a minute oh left click left click Hold on, shift before you left click the second one. Alt M at first. Left click, hold on, shift. Left click, Alt M, merge at first. Because that's going to give us like a even flow from front to back. Because it's going to be like one of the vertices. I'm just going to call it one vertice line. I don't know what else I could call it. Because the vertice is just for one vertice line from front to back. And let's do the same thing with the back. Left click, hold on, shift, left click. Alt M at first, left click, hold down shift, left click, Alt M at first, left click, hold down shift, left click, Alt M at first. Okay, so this should give us a, the result we're looking for, which is just one solid smooth mesh with no weird looking wrinkles in it at all. Okay, just got to make sure this is. It's always good to just cross-examine your work before you go to the next step. It's going to save you a lot of time in the end. So let me make sure this is not going to look weird afterwards when we add when we apply the uh, subsurface modifier and the cloth simulation because those are the vital two vital parts of of this whole thing. Okay, okay, I think we're. We're good. Let me let's do one more thing. Just one more thing. I know I'm sounding like Steve Jobs right now, but just one more thing. <laughs> um, let me pull this out. Pull this out so that this mesh. Or actually, let's pull this mesh in so that it, it gets closer to those. That's those set of meshes. So let's go to edge select. Hold on Alt and then left click to, to choose that set of vertices. And then we're gonna left click on our X directional button and pull this in. Okay. Yeah, it looks better. That looks pretty much like a t-shirt would look. And let's do the same thing to the back. A to deselect it from the front. Hold on Alt, left click. And then we're going to hold down left button over the, the X directional arrow. Pull that in also. Okay, that looks a lot better. And then we're going to do the same thing to the top. Pull this in. Let's click on our verb select. Click on that. Left click on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hold down left mouse button on the X directional arrow and pull that in also. All right. So let's simulate this. Let's add add a subsurface 
modifier to this and we're going to we're going to make this smooth we're going to tab out of edit mode press W okay this is not this is Aston Blender 2.8 that's just keyboard shortcut for Blender actually this is another another add-on that I have that's using the same keyboard shortcut but to smooth out your mesh you could just press W and it brings up the uh, pop-up menu just press click on smooth but I can't do that right now because I have another uh, keyboard shortcut applied to, to uh, that particular uh, command so I'm going to press T for my toolbar and then here from the top uh, pop-up or the top tab uh, the shading make that smooth it makes all that smooth let's press uh, T to close that out it's still this looks like a <laughs> looks just like a a, um, a bulletproof vest but it's not we're going to change that and before you apply your cloth simulation to uh, to your mesh let's turn the oh this is fine render to v1 before you apply your cloth simulation what you have to do is apply your modifiers so click apply and apply and when we press tab we have a very very even looking topology on our on our mesh which is exactly what we're looking for press tab to get out of that press one for the front view and now we're going to go to the the magic so to speak of you know of blender here and we're going to go to our our physics is this physics is it in physics or is it in particles it's in physics yes we're going to click on cloth click on that and what we're going to do here is leave that as it is and click on our model because we want the cloth to stay on our model if we were to run the simulation right now and not have this model as our collision object the cloth is going to fall right through so we're going to click on our model left click on your model and we're going to click on collision so that way the, the uh, cloth knows that this is what it should attach itself to let's click on our model again let's look at some of the settings now with the settings I tend to leave it as it is um, you want you might want to turn on turn on self collision if I could find it in this let me see there's self collision that way when the cloth wraps or you know collides with itself it won't go past through itself it'll just stay the way it is and as you can see once we've activated the let me pull this up once we've activated the uh, cloth simulator we have a faint purple line which means that it's activated and we're, what we're going to do now is press alt a now it might take some time it depends on what kind of computer that you've got but it depends on the number of vertices that you have on your model in terms of how much you want the simulation to uh, appear realistic now if you have uh, a strong computer it's better to have a very high subsurface modifier applied to your cloth which means from here uh, from your, your uh, subsurface modifier it's better to have it like around four because that gives really realistic looking cloth wrinkles and everything looks great but if your computer can't handle it two is pretty much okay so now I'm gonna press alt a and that's how you activate the call cloth simulator you can see what it's doing and it might take some time it might you may not I'm using my laptop to record it so this might take time it might not but it depends and I may have may have to uh, stop the recording and we'll come back to it again but let's press alt a and see what happens all day okay I didn't have to stop the simulation okay you can see that it's the reason why it's passing through like the way it is is because of the the vertices on there they're not that many the subdivision surface the subdivisions aren't that much so it's, it's not really you know uh, being able to divide the mesh up properly let's press escape now let's 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 increase our let's add another uh, cloth modifier to it or a subsurface modifier to it. We're going to keep the view at one and press apply again. And then let's simulate the cloth simulation. Sometimes when you do this with Blender, you add a modifi modifier after you've uh, applied a cloth modifier. Sometimes it doesn't take. Sometimes it does, but we'll see what happens. Let's press Alt A again. Okay, it, it took this time. 
And as you can see, since we added another subsurface modifier to it, the cloth looks much more realistic. It's not going through the model at all. And this is what we're wanting. And as I mentioned before, if you really want to have a really, really, you know, convincing looking cloth simulation t-shirt or whatever on your model, you have to bump up the subsurface account. You can bump it up in the subsurface. And you can also bump it up in the cloth modifier, but I, I just like using the subsurface. That's To me, that's a little bit better. And you can see that it's, uh, it's applied to it. And let's press escape. Okay. okay, let's go all the way to the end. Let's let's hover. Let's look around our model here. Uh, if this would turn. Yes. Okay, there we go. You can see that. You can see the wrinkles in it, and it looks pretty good. Now let's press one to go back to the front view. Now, in order to bake this, and to just uh, have it to where if the the uh, cloth modifier has been applied to your mesh. What you're going to have to do is let's let's uh, take our um, timeline back to one here. Press that to go back to one, and go file and click on save, because that's how Blender works. In order to apply your modifier to your model, you have to save it. So we've applied that. <clears throat> and let's go up to, excuse me, our cloth modifier. We're going to go to cloth. Let's close this out. Cloth cache or cache however that's pronounced and we're going to leave it on use library path I think I really don't know what the point of this is I mean I, I don't really understand this too much just between this cache or cache and user library path but I just leave it on this and then what you want to do is press bake and it's going to have a countdown to this may take sometimes baking depends on your mesh size. It may take a little bit longer, and, can put, and depending upon how strong your computer is, <clears throat> excuse me. But this should be going pretty fast. It should be this is going pretty pretty fast. I like the with the speed of this, so I don't have to pause the recording at all. So this is going to go all the way through to 100%, and then it's done. This is going really it's going by really fast. I'm kind of surprised, a little bit shocked it was happening now, but okay, that's that's good. That's cool. And it's done. Okay. So now you can go to you can go to your modifier and you click apply and it applies it. There's an option here too. Oh, hold on for a second. We got rid of our simulation. Uh, okay, there it is. I don't know what, what happens. I don't know if you have to be at the end of it in order for it to, because that has happened to me before where I would click apply and it would just delete the cloth simulation. So just be careful of that. Make sure you save as often as you can so you don't have to go through this process again. But you can apply it as a shape key, which is what I usually do. Let's click on that. Hopefully it'll save the cloth simulation and it won't delete it. So just click apply. And it deleted it again. Okay. Let me see. Let's press. It is still baked. Let's check and make sure it's still baked in there. Okay, it deleted the bake. Let's go back to the beginning and bake it again. Let's click bake. And then after we click bake, let's just save it. And that's one thing you have to do just in general. And that's just with any kind of software, not, not just Blender specifically, any kind of software, any kind of program that you're working with, any kind of project save as often as you can every time it comes to your mind to save your project just save it because you don't want to go through the process of trying to redo all this stuff over again the headache of doing that so just save as often as you can it's just a good habit to have and it's going through the simulation one more time and then when it's gone through that simulation we're just going to click save uh, and it's done okay let's go through the end okay there it is Okay, let's click save file and save. Now, as I say, you can just go to the modifier stack and click apply. Applying as a shape key is the best thing to do because once you apply as a shape key, you can actually just mess with the amount of, of wrinkles you want in it. And I'm going to I'm going to click apply again, and hopefully, it's going to 
just keep the bake baked into the cloth. Hopefully it's going to do that because all this is grayed out, which means it's been baked. Go on the modifier stack and click apply, and it's not doing it again. Okay, but I will show you how to, because I mean when you have it saved as, as a shape key, what you do is you go to this little icon there, click on that, and it's going to save it in this area. Once it's been saved there, it's going to have uh, integers at the bottom or, you know, degrees of how of how you want the shape keys to be applied to the uh, the mesh. You can just, instead of doing this on the timeline, you'll be able to do this as a shape key and just have a slider that to slide it back and forth. But yeah, this is how to create a t-shirt in Blender for beginners using the modifier stacker, uh, moving around vertices and so on and so forth. And this is for beginners. And even if you've been using Blender for a long time, you know, this is a way to create something, a t-shirt, instead of like buying it from, you know, other sites, just make it yourself. You can apply this concept to t-shirts, to pants, to dress shirts, anything at all. And like I said, we're, I'm going to keep this series going, Blender Quickies for Beginners. And uh, I'm going to just keep that going and just say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and thanks to everyone who will subscribe in the future. And I appreciate all you guys. And I'll see you guys on the next one. You have a great night and have a great life. All right, bye.